Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it is time for my client Michelle's vlog, and we are in meat prep. She's very, very close to a meet. We've rotated over to four-day uh, max effort training, which she wanted to do. Um, she brought it up, noticed I was doing it, and said, hey, you know, can I do the same thing? I'm like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that going into the meet. So we started off uh, with a floor press, right? She did a floor press. She got 160 pounds. We're very happy with it. So we're basically doing two bench days and then a squat and a deadlift day every week as far as uh, hitting a training max on some variation and then we do supplemental work for those appropriate lifts. So essentially it's, it's an upper lower uh, with a bias towards squat and a bias towards deadlift on the two separate days each week. And it's still holding true to the main principles of conjugate, just we're not doing speed work, we're doing maxes instead. All right, on her... Uh, Floor press day, we of course did pause benching, uh, four sets of five afterwards. Uh, then she's doing barbell rows. Um, and I do want to work on her getting a little stricter on these. Um, I haven't given her much instruction on them yet uh, to where we, we get into a deadlift type position and get explosive, but uh, that's okay. We'll work on that over time. All right, afterwards, we do continue to do her JM presses. All right, she excels at these. She's very, very strong at them. Uh, her triceps are extremely strong. Uh, again, this is from years of only closed grip benching and doing no wider grip till I got her shoulders in a situation to where she could uh, wide grip more comfortably. And so then we're having to build up the musculature for that. But because of all the, the closed grip benching for years and not using her pecs as much because of the narrower grip, her triceps have had to compensate. Her triceps are very, very strong. Um, we also do chin-ups and we do uh, some shoulder work on every one of these upper days. And I'm kind of rotating around for her with front raises, lateral raises, things like that. I like both, I think they both have their place. Uh, they're both good exercises. Uh, so in this particular workout, we did uh, plate front raises afterwards. So it ends up being uh, for supplemental work, pause benching, uh, barbell rows, chin-ups, JM presses, front raises for this day. All right. And then for the first max effort for this week, we did a back squat using a safety squat bar. And I believe she got either 245 or 250. I know she can get mad at me for not remembering which. Uh, I know it's one of the two. I know it's one of the two. But considering it's, it's very, very close to her back squat, um, I'll take it. Plus, look at the depth on this. We're real happy with that depth. Uh, definitely going to be meat legal depth. She did it with a safety bar and her best squat's been 260. So we're very, very close to that with that safety bar. And afterwards we did some pause squats and I think I misplaced that footage uh, in looking for the brevity of this video. I think I cut it out uh, because again, I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes if possible, uh, just to keep fewer retention in and just trying to pick the best highlights of, of what she did throughout the week. But we did do some pause squats for five afterwards. Uh, then I have her do uh, single leg presses uh, to, again, get plenty of, of quad work in. We want to make sure we're hitting her quads now again, even though she tends to be uh, slightly more quad dominant as far as her lower body goes, which is very, very typical for women, but it's not an ideal scenario. Uh, it's one reason I do tend to keep most of my girls a little more posterior focused uh, when we're, we're coaching them, you know, just in terms of muscle balance. And it just has to do with the way women carry themselves and the way it develops their musculature. Uh, so again, it, that can also cause uh, some knee injuries and stuff over time. So just be aware of that, by the way, uh, coaches, when it comes to your lady lifters, uh, just be aware you may need to keep their training slightly more posterior chain dominant just from a muscle balance and an injury uh, prevention perspective. But that's exactly what we're doing here. We, of course, always finish up for her with glute ham raises and reverse hyperextensions. So I end all of her lower body workouts that way, even if I, if I turn the footage out, just be aware those two exercises are always there for her. We don't, we don't skip those on lower days, okay? Uh, she needs them. So again, they address her weak links because historically for her hamstrings, uh, tend to limit her deadlifting. Her back is very, very, very strong. So usually her hamstrings tend to be the weak link on her ability to deadlift a max. All right, so then we did a pause bench for the second bench press workout. Got a good pause. Look at that nice three count pause, which is what I wanted. Drove it up 160. So 160 with a three second pause, which is what we wanted her to do. 
uh, which means that's a real good second attempt because that went up super clean. Um, I'm very confident that she can open and then go to 160 for a second attempt and then try to PR for a third uh, coming up for her meet. All right, then of course we do rep work on the pause bench, right? Taking those nice solid pauses, uh, doing uh, three sets of five. Uh, so again, something I want her to work on there. And we'll eventually, after, after the meet's done, I may take these back over to some higher rep work uh, to continue to develop her pectorals. Uh, then we do barbell rows, and for those who don't know the difference, again, a barbell row is done off the floor. People often call it a pen lay row, much, much cleaner this time. Uh, and I think this shows too, notice uh, that she does struggle a little bit on the levers with this because her legs are very, very long. Uh, some people are not aware she is a tall lifter. She is five foot nine, which is, you know, again, very, very tall for a woman. Uh, definitely above average height, but it also means she's got longer legs. So it tends to put her into those positions when it comes to rowing that aren't always ideal, but it's good to practice getting tied into those positions because it will also help with her deadlift. And again, her uh, not compensating for the hamstring so much, if we can get practice setting up better there. So I like the rows off the floor as a teaching tool for the deadlift. And then, of course, we do the uh, similar work again, all the same back work, chin-ups, JM presses. I'm throwing the footage into those again just because she's super strong at those. Uh, not that she's not good at chin-ups. I think the JM presses are more impressive because a, a lot of my male lifters and clients, they see her blocks in the, the JM presses and they've commented on it. Some of them are just like, holy shit. All right, then for shoulders on this day, we do some lateral raises, okay? just to again make sure we're, we're getting additional shoulder development we're getting a lot of benching a lot of pulling but we do want to throw a little bit of shoulders in for her to again keep them growing uh, and then we finish up the week uh, with deadlifts and she pulled 300 pounds plus 38 pounds of chains so this is definitely a pr we're up in the pr territory here uh, puts us in a good spot she tends to be weak at lockouts on a deadlift she's fast off the floor so when we're pulling against chains like this that are heavier than her max, right, we're in a good spot because that went up nice and clean. Like she's gonna pull minimum 325, I think, at this, this meet. Hopefully, hopefully more on a third attempt. Uh, then I have her do some deficit deadlifts. Um, so we do deficit work for fives, just off of a one inch deficit uh, to again help her build speed, to accelerate, to help with those lockouts, which is what we use deficit deadlifts for in addition to being a hypertrophy tool. Um, then of course we finish up with the normal stuff, which is what? Some leg presses, um, some glute ham raises, reverse hyperextensions, and then some ab work. And I finished up this vlog with her ab work. She does toe to bars at the end. And I like to throw in a set of those for everyone to watch every now and then just to show um, how strong her core is, right? It's a very, very strong core and abs. Uh, again, something that's beneficial for our power lifters to have. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.